Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope everyone's doing well. So today's video is um, I'm going to be putting together the cover for the Boho Baby uh, junk journal that I'm making for my friend Kim. So I've already glued the pieces together that I want to make so I've added some ledges to the spines here and then what I'm using is some sports tape and some uh, paper straws and basically the paper straws are there to just give me a bit of a guide so I've got enough space between the spine and the cover piece. Um, so as soon as I've got the first side on I don't need to keep the straw in there so I've just pulled that out and then I'm just using the elastic tape um, to just kind of make the hinge. So I'm going to continue to do this um, for all of the pieces and my plan for this journal is to, so I've got the normal journal, so I've got the normal front and back cover and a spine, but I'm also including um, a second spine and a second cover. So basically um, it's a little bit like a book of shadows sort of layout, but <clears throat> uh, it's going to be uh, obviously not a book of shadows. Um, so we'll have this part um, that you can see on the screen now um, and then I'm going to be adding the extra spine um, to the bottom of the other corner on the right, um, although I might do it slightly different because obviously it doesn't matter which way up it goes at the moment. Um, it's just really about making sure that I'm getting the spines with the ledges in the right place. So you can see here I'm just using a bone folder to just really get in there and make sure that I'm getting this sports tape around those ledges so they've still got all that nice clear definition. Um, so this sports tape is just really really stretchy um, and very sticky, like it's unbelievably sticky, um, which is perfect to make book hinges. Um, so again, I'm just doing the same process here. So I'm just using a paper straw to give me the right spacing, um, attaching some of the elastic tape, uh, sports tape to, to the extra spine bit um, and just literally repeating the same process again. So normally I don't really do um, sort of voiceovers. I tend to talk as I'm crafting. Um, but I, d I don't know, I kind of found that um, I focused <laughs> on my crafting and got through things a little bit quicker um, if I wasn't talking through it and I was just kind of listening to my music and stuff. So that's why there's no audio at all, um, because obviously um, there's copyright laws and stuff, so I can't kind of put the music on here that I want. And to be honest, you probably won't like the music that I listen to anyway. <laughs> um, uh, so that's literally why I've taken the audio off because it's just kind of more comfortable for me with the, the whole crafting process. So you can see here now um, that I have completed all of the hinges for my journal and ha hopefully you can kind of see how this is going to work. Um, so um, now I'm going to move on to getting the journal covered. So that fabric there is the main one that I want to be using for the outside cover. So it's literally a duvet um, that I found uh, in a store that I thought was just like perfect for this with the colour scheme and it's quite nature themed as well. But obviously you can see on there that you can see through it. So what I wanted to do was add some fabric underneath. So I'm just trying this out to see if this fabric covers over the fact that there's just white tape. Um, and it does seem to do the job. Um, however, I do decide to use the rest of the sports tape because um, I don't really have any plans to make another journal um, anytime soon. So I thought, well, I'll just use this up for now. I mean, it cost me like a pound, which is like a dollar. So um, it's, yeah, I just thought, you know, I can, I can get that pretty easily. <laughs> um, so I just used the rest of it up um, just to try and give it an even cover. Um, but unfortunately, I didn't have as much as I thought I did. Um, so here I am using um, some Fabri-Tac and I am basically sticking um, the like under fabric, the, um, the colour stopper fabric, let's call it, <laughs> um, just to the spine. Um, so you can see here that I'm using the bone folder to really get in there um, and just really make sure that I've got some really clear definition around the ledges. Um, so I'm just trying to use quite a lot of Fabri-Tac. Um, so I'm using the Sugar Bell bottle here at the moment. Um, and to be honest, the Sugar Bell bottle was driving me insane <laughs> because um, as as nice as it is to squeeze the um, the fabric out, it literally 
is I don't know it just takes such a long long time to get that glue down which is why I've I've cut out quite a lot because to be honest a lot of the filming was just literally me waiting for the glue to come down um so I've I've cut some of that stuff out um and then you can see I'm just really really squeezing it I mean it's not difficult to squeeze the bottle so it is nice but the only problem with a sugar bell bottle is I don't really feel safe leaving it upside down um because it's an icing bottle so the the opening is is a little bit wider um, than any kind of pin that I can put in there so I just think that if I turned it upside down and left it that way then um, the glue would just go everywhere <laughs> um, so I think as soon as I get to the point where I haven't got enough left I'll just kind of use a new fabric ta uh, fabric tack bottle um, so again just kind of doing the same thing just really really trying to get in there and make sure I've got some really good definition there you see I've got rid of the nozzle because it was driving me mad <laughs> Um, and I've just started to use it with my finger. Um, oh, sorry, yeah, to spread it out with my finger, just using the actual um, inner nozzle, I guess it, it is. I don't know the inner workings of a <laughs> nice bottle. I don't know what everything's called. Um, okay, so I've just flipped the journal around so I can get this other side covered. Um, and again, just literally um, tapping the bottle to get as much of the glue out as I can. Um, the sugar bell bottles are good, but I think you need a very good supply of Fabri-Tac in that in like in your drawer or whatever, so that you can just literally, um, replace it as quickly as possible. So here I'm just deciding which way I want to, um, stick this onto the inside, and I had a little bit too much fabric, so I'm just kind of trimming this down a little bit. So I was wondering whether I should do the corners in or just do it like, um, side and tops and I think um, I decided to just kind of um, pull up the tops and pull over the sides rather than do the corners um, I think if it's paper I would prefer to do it with the corners um, but with fabric it's fine really to do it like this um, so again just literally using a lot of glue um, and spreading it with my finger because if you don't spread this um, fabric tack I've found that if you put thin fabric onto it it will just kind of show up in globs where you've put it whereas if you spread it out a little bit with your finger or a glue spreader or something it just seems to be I don't know a lot nicer looking like you can't really tell that there's something underneath it so I've just um, I've pulled it nice and tight so that I've got a nice taut sort of finish obviously it's not going to pull from the other side because it's completely glued on the underside as well um, but I'm just making sure that it's nice and taut over the the tops and things and then I'm just running across it and um, so you can see now I've switched to the fabri -Tac bottle and unfortunately I can't use my finger with this bottle because um, I think I don't know if it is some kind of knock off fabri -Tac or something but it is literally burning my skin to to use um so generally I'm trying to just use um lollipop sticks um for some reason I have a massive surplus of them um so here I'm just kind of using a pencil just to outline roughly where I need to glue up to um just to save me having to go back through it again um and then I'm using the, the lollipop stick to spread it across um and then I will glue the flaps up on this as well um but yeah, I don't really know what, what's wrong with this fabri -Tac. It doesn't look like a normal fabri -Tac bottle. So I think that potentially I've bought some kind of um, <laughs> rip-off maybe. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's unfortunately because it's not made in the UK. I um, can't really get it in this country. So I have to rely on getting it shipped um, from different places. So um, sometimes I think what comes isn't quite what you've ordered, <laughs> unfortunately. Um but it is what it is. Um, I have tested the glue and made sure that it does actually work and it does work perfectly and it's not, um, it doesn't smell or anything like that. Um, and it seems completely fine because it really is, it really does do the job just fine. So, um, so here I'm just kind of chopping off these little pieces just so that I don't have like a big thick bubbly end and then I miter in the corner a little bit. Um, and this is so that I don't have a big kind of corner bit sticking out. So here I'm just putting a piece of glue, uh, a line of glue across this just little edge. And then I'll basically pull the fabric up as tight as I can just to make sure that it is nice and flush against the edge. And then I'm just using a bone folder to 
um, run that along as well and then I'll glue the inside of the flap um, but it also gives me the opportunity to cut off any excess bits on the corner um, just to make sure that I'm actually getting that covered and it's nice smooth. I am going to use butt corners to be honest on this so that kind of thing wouldn't really matter that much but I still just want it to be nice and neat. Um, so again I just used a pencil to kind of draw a line so I knew roughly where to glue up to and then I've used the bone folder to just kind of um, squidge it out so that it's nice and smooth. So again same here just cutting off the excess to make sure that I don't have too much bulk on the corners um, and then I will miter this as well just like that. So mitering if you're not familiar is just literally um, cutting the corners off at an angle um, and that means that when you do flap something over it doesn't stick out at the edges um, because obviously even if I do put butt corners on um, I don't want the fabric to be kind of layered up underneath because um, obviously I'll put like a covering piece uh, of card on the inside to make sure it's nice and tidy um, but I don't want it to like show kind of thing so I want it to be nice and neat so I've done the same thing again I've just kind of um put some glue on the edge pulled it nice and tight so it's really nice and a neat clean sort of cut across the the edge of the cover um, and then I'm just adding the glue here now just to make sure that I've got this stuck down nice and firmly so um I had to leave this to dry um for a little while um, and then I was able to move on to, oh, <laughs> just popped my head in the screen there. Um, then I was just able to move on to adding the extra um, cover, the extra fabric for the cover. Um, but just here, what I'm doing is just literally adding in some extra glue, just in any bits that I didn't feel were quite stuck down enough. Okay, so that's the first cover. Um, and then, as I say, I just kind of left this to dry for a bit. And then um, once it was dry, I was able to come back in with this one. So I wanted to make sure that this obviously was really nice and neat. So I used little bulldog clips just to hold it in place and to make sure that the pattern was in the right place as well. Because I didn't want, with it, be, with it having a pattern, I know it's not exactly like a, a very... Um, I feel like it wouldn't make that much of a difference if it wasn't straight, but I just had the way that I wanted it to be in my mind um, as the way it is. So that's why I clipped it on with bulldog clips, just so that I could get some of it stuck down um, before, you know, kind of going on for the rest of it. So I start with the spine um, just because I've got the ledges. So I did get a little bit panicked here because um, obviously you can see some of the glue stick coming through there. So you remember when I said that you do need to kind of use, um, you need to spread the glue a little bit because if you put f um, thin fabric down, it can show through and that's kind of what was happening here. But the good thing about Fabri-Tac is that it, once it's kind of tacky, you can start, you can just literally rub your finger across it um, and it'll get rid of it. Um, and it's just, it's very nice and easy to use. And that is one of the reasons why I really do like Fabri-Tac. So I know it doesn't look like I've spread it there because it's on fabric. So it's just literally putting a, a sort of a wet stain where I've originally squeezed it on, but it was spread all the way across just so I've got a nice even coverage. Um, so again, just pretty much doing the same thing. So now I can remove the bulldog clips because I've glued down um, one side of it. Um, and now I'm just proceeding to keep gluing uh, the rest of it down as well. So like I was saying, um, I am actually enjoying doing these voiceovers rather than talking whilst I'm actually trying to do my crafting because it's it's really, really hard to try and make sense and think of things to say whilst you're uh, talking uh, well, talking and crafting at the same time, it's it's sometimes quite difficult. I suppose, obviously, for those of you that do post videos will probably be aware of this. <laughs> um, So it's a bit difficult to try and, I don't know, get things done. I feel like I just, I, I don't know, I feel like I was very productive in these videos compared to what I would normally be like if I was trying to talk through it as well. Um. So I know that I haven't uploaded um many videos lately. Um I've just kind of been taking a bit of a break 
um, from crafting. I think, you know, when you just kind of do something so much and obviously, like, I would like to try and make a career out of this, um, but I think that I just kind of went a little bit too hard at it to go <laughs> to start with and it just kind of, I don't know, I stopped enjoying it. Um, obviously I've, I've persevered with this because it was a present for a friend and I wanted to make sure I'd made it. Um, but I think that, um, once I've got this completed, it's pretty much going to be it for a little while. I think, um, I'm trying to pursue other hobbies. I mean, I'm sure you know what it's like. You've got so many things that you want to do all the time and, um, it's just hard, I think, sometimes to just sort of stick to one thing. Um, and plus, with having a full-time job and only having a couple of hours in the evening and um, having to spend my weekends and things like that, and there's other things that I like doing as well. I don't just like crafting. Um, I like quite a lot of different things. Um, so sometimes it's quite difficult. Obviously, whenever I do make anything, I will absolutely film it and I'll pop it on here because it's not really that difficult. Um, I mean... I've said before, you know, the editing side of it is not always that fun. I'm sure those of you that do put videos up know that. Um, I mean, some of you probably really do enjoy it, but it's not really my cup of tea kind of sitting here watching myself do everything and then um, editing it all. And it just takes hours. It just takes such a long time to do. Um, so, yeah, so that's kind of why I've not um, uploaded much lately. Um like I say, um, I'm, you know, I'm never going to give up crafting, so I do really enjoy it, but I think, um, for now, I am just kind of taking a bit of a rest from it, um, whilst I pursue some other hobbies, um, but obviously, like I say, if you do subscribe, then you'll be notified, um, as and when I do, um, upload videos, um, and it is nice to kind of get subscribers, because, because then it just kind of feels worth it, um, it feels like you're actually kind of reaching people and people want to um, watch your content and things like that. So um, it is nice to get subscribers. So um, please do um, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have, thank you very much. Um, okay, so I'm still um, just kind of attaching the fabric cover. So um, still the same sort of thing as you've seen me do with the cover underneath. Um, I'm just really trying to make sure that I get a really good stick so if you've noticed I'm kind of running the lollipop stick along the inside um, of the cover as well just to make sure that it's all kind of sticking to the edges as well. Okay so that is all of the fabric cover glued on um, so I've left that for a few days. Now here um, I didn't well, I thought I'd recorded me doing this, but I guess I didn't. Um, but basically, I've added in some signatures into this little flap. So this section is basically Kim's baby book. Um, and I've added the signatures in using elastic. So rather than actually sewing them in, um, I got some backing card. Um, and then I cut some, well, I used a, a cropper dial to make some eyelets. Um, and I did put some eyelets in, so I put three at the top and three at the bottom, and then I put a piece of elastic uh, into that and just tied it at the back, and then glued that backing card onto the journal, and then um, I was then able to put the signatures, well, just slip them in into the elastic, so I wanted the signatures for that part to be completely removable, um, because um, they've got kind of dates, like they are like the baby's first month, second month, first Halloween, first Christmas, all that kind of stuff. So um, it's just kind of, it's in an order that I think will work for when the baby's born. Um, but it's obviously, I, I wanted Kim to kind of have the freedom to um, move them around as much as possible. And I also included a page tab on every page that had something for her to fill in. And then the pages in between that are just kind of pages for her to stick photos and um, to write and things like that. You can also see on the side there that there's a, a strip of fabric going over the, the signatures with some beads and charms on. And that's basically because whenever you flap the book down, all the pages obviously will just flop um, onto the other side. And I just want to avoid them getting like bent and creased up and things like that. So um, I added some beads to another piece of elastic um, and added that in there as well. 
Um, so on the on the main um spine, what I've added is some lace, so some sage and some white lace, so similar to what I'll be putting on the signatures. Um, you can just kind of see that the signatures are on the the right there, or the papers at least for the signatures. Um, so the papers um that are already in the book are a a kit. So all the pages and all the ephemera are kits from my porch prints so if you search my porch prints um on etsy and in their shop if you just literally search baby it'll come up with um these kits so um i've added the lace um and i've also added these strings so similar to what i did with the um the little string on the right hand side is i've added some beads um to some string these beads are quite small um, and the, these strings are quite thick. <laughs> so to get these on, I had to use a threader and it was a nightmare. They were really, really tough to get on there. But I just liked the idea of this, a little bit like an abacus, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's just kind of, I liked the idea of it. I thought it was quite elegant because um, I didn't want to overload this journal because Kim is um, a very classy lady. She's got very good taste and I just wanted to make sure that this journal wasn't kind of too over the top for her. Um, so here I'm just adding the closure. So I've just weaved this in between the lace on the spine um, and then I'm going to glue the lace onto the actual book cover itself um, and just I'm just kind of making sure I've got enough for tying things um so here i'm just gluing this on and again i'm just spreading the glue out because especially with lace it, it is super super thin um lace and obviously glue can just kind of pop through um the little holes that are in the lace um so i'm just adding that on here um and that is literally everything that I'm going to be covering in today's video. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Um, if you have, please give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. And I will catch you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye.